What is going on guys, my name is Nikita, this is the Hockey Nation, in today's video let's go ahead and talk about the Toronto Maple Leafs and the initial rumors that have been swirling around this team. Now this is only the rumors for the Toronto Maple Leafs, this is not for any other teams because Spectres Hockey only covered the Toronto Maple Leafs tonight for May 3rd and uh, it's produced by Lyle Richardson who is the writer of this article, so if you guys enjoyed this video make sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe if you're new pass it by and if you're a hockey fan like me and don't forget to hit that bell button so you don't miss any of my future videos on this channel and let's get right into this thing so a roundup of recent toronto Maple police speculations in today's initial rumor mill uh and it starts with the athletic quote so johnny Siegel lists re-signing Mitch Marner to be the Toronto Maple Leafs top priority this summer. Obviously, Kyle Dubas came out in an interview and said that uh, he was willing to re-sign uh, Marner, and he said that this was their top priority. He wasn't going to look at anything else, and uh, he said that they're going to try to get it done before July 1st. Now, apparently, the rumors have been swirling around that if they're not able to get a, done, uh, a deal done by a draft of June 24th, uh, which I believe is in Vancouver, then... Um, uh, they might be looking to trade him or do something else uh, or, you know, just, you know, give him up in the RFA stage and if anyone offers him anything and they just regain the four draft picks in return. Now, those will be four first round draft picks because of how much money he's looking for. Uh, however, the Leafs have limited salary cap space and that will affect how much the Leafs can pay him. It's possible he could sign an offer sheet after July 1st if he hasn't re-signed with the Leafs by then. So... Uh, there's multiple options that the Leafs can go with this. They can either, you know, say, okay, screw it. We can just acquire four first-round picks and then, say, trade half of those uh, for, you know, some other potential players that could fit in into their uh, roles, like a defenseman. They need a top four defenseman to replace Nikita Zaitsev and that awful contract. And uh, someone might be a taker this summer. Siegel also believes the Leafs must upgrade their blue line. He wonder if center Nazem Kadri becomes a trade bait to line the defenseman or if general manager Kyle Dubas can resign the unrestricted free agent Jake Gardner. He also feels they should attempt to shed burn some contracts of Patrick Marlowe and Nikita Zaitsev. Now for Patrick Marlowe, what I will say is he's going to have to wave down that no movement clause first before he goes anywhere. And if he's not going to be willing to waive that at $6.25 million, then he's not going to be going anywhere. Uh, he has the right to say wherever uh, he wants to go or if he doesn't want to go. And if he doesn't want to go, well, then that's too bad. Uh, James Myrtle considers Connor Brown and Nikita Zaitsev as the players most likely to be traded by the Maple Leafs this summer. It's obvious that the Oilers are among the teams interested in Brown because uh, Brown has that connection with McDavid. I believe they played on the same line in junior, so um, that could be uh, you know something that the Oilers look into as well. Who cares an annual average salary of 2.1, which is not that bad at all. Zetif contract is off of 4.5 million through 2023-2024, but there are teams badly in need of a right shot defenseman. And if he can regain his form that he had in that first year with the Maple Leafs, then you know teams are going to find it as a very uh, enticing option for them down the, down the road. But first, he's going to have to prove himself as, elsewhere. Regarding Mitch Marner's upcoming contract negotiations, Myrtle acknowledges it will be difficult. He doesn't rule out a trade or an offer sheet if a new contract isn't harmed out by July 1st. Myrtle also believes the Leafs have big decisions to make with left-wing Patrick Marlowe and center Nazem Kadri. Marlowe's no movement clause at $6.25 million uh, uh, you know, affects his trade value as his, as his uh, production in uh, uh, points and goals have been declining over the years. Kadri's playoff suspensions may have helped him stay with the Leafs as they struggled without him in the lineup against the Bruins in the opening round. Replacing him will be difficult. He also believes the unrestricted for agents Gardner, Hainsey, and Ennis will likely depart this summer. Now, what I will say, the biggest probably two out of those three are Ennis and Gardner. I would have liked to see Ennis come back, but... Uh, he played well enough to earn a one-way contract this summer, so um, that's probably what's going to happen. So Luke Fox on Sportsdown recently looked at several ways for Leafs to freeze salary cap space this summer. One way is letting UFAs walk. Another is trading a roster player signed through next season like Nylander, Marlowe, Kadri, Brown, or Zaitsev. 
They could bridge offer Andreas Janssen could spare a captain, or they could trade or allow one of them to be signed via offer sheet. Another is attempting to package the rights of permanently signed sideline Nathan Horn with a job pick or a prospect to a team in need of reaching the salary cap minimum. And earlier this week, Darren Dreger reported the Leafs defenseman Igor Ojiganov could return to the KHL after one season in the NHL. Obviously, he didn't have the greatest year for the Toronto Maple Leafs. They expected him to be the shutdown big defenseman, but he just did not deliver, and he was a defensive mobility. Spectres notes that, as noted here and elsewhere earlier this week, modern negotiations will de determine what happens with the rest of the Leafs roster. As per cap friendly, the Leafs have over $74.2 million left. Uh, tied up in 17 players for the 2019-20 season. Assuming Marner accepts a hometown discount, there's no indication he will. His new contract will push the Leafs over next season's projected $83 million cap hit. So, uh, you know, with just under $9 million in cap space, uh, yeah, it's definitely going to push him over the salary cap. So that's why they need to get rid of, uh, rid of either uh, Zaitsev, Marlowe, or just, you know, a bunch of these guys that are sound. Uh, that are sound that are signed uh, to these uh, contracts that are over one year or more. Uh, Dubas has to shed salary cap space to accommodate Marner's new contract and create room to resign Captain and Janssen and resign or replace Gardner and Hainsey. Bundling Horn's rights for uh, with a draft pick or a prospect is a possibility, but there's no but there's not a lot of budget teams in there in need of reaching the cap minimum. Moving Marlowe and Zaitsev are the obvious options, but easier said than done. At this stage in his career, Marlowe might not be keen to move his family again, uh, other than perhaps back to California. I've seen this suggest that he would waive his clause to return to San Jose, but I doubt he fits into to, to the Sharks' plans now. The length of Zaitsev contract could be a deal breaker unless Dubas includes a hell of a sweetener. Despite his playoff suspensions, Kadri would be an attractive trade chip. If Dubas were to move him, however, I don't think it will be a salary dump. He'll want something significant like a top four right-handed defenseman in return. We all know Dubas supposedly promised Nylander he wouldn't trade him as long as he was the general manager. I feel he was sincere, but he might have to face breaking that promise for the greater good. If, du if Dubas can't free up sufficient salary, he won't be able to adequately replace Gardner or resign Haynes if he's willing to accept a pay cut. Um, he also risks losing Captain and uh, Janssen to an offer sheet or being forced to trade one of them. No wonder there's something su suggesting that Marner could be traded or allowed to be signed via offer sheet this summer. Uh, Dubas will do all he can to get some Marner uh, to stay and I'll believe they'll get a deal done. But if they won't, we can't dismiss the possibility of Dubas looking to move on before July 1st. Dubas could resign Marner to a hometown discount, shed salary by shipping out Horn, Marlowe, and Zaitsev, retain Kadri and Nylander, resign Captain Janssen, find the suitable replacements for Haynes and Gardner, and still manage to land the top four right-handed defenseman regard. Given his cap uh, constraints, however, I doubt he'll be able to pull anything off. So that was it for the Toronto Maple Leafs rumors. Let me know what you guys felt about it down in the comment section. I'd really love to hear what you guys have to say. Uh, there's a lot of rumors swirling around this team, and definitely so. You know, this team has a lot of decisions to make over the summer, and they're going to have to find ways to shed a lot of salary cap. They got players like Marlowe, Nylander, Kadri, and Zaitsev that they could all shed away. They could also shed away pieces like Hyman and uh, Brown, which are the unlikely guys to go. I mean, Brown will be the only likely one if they're willing to uh, rediscover that trade. Uh, that almost went down between them and the Oilers during the trade deadline this summer. Uh, I mean this uh, season, but um, unless that picks up, there's really nothing much that they could look into uh, into making a one for one deal. I mean, obviously, if they're gonna trade Kadri, they would want a significant top four right handed shot defenseman, and I really don't know if there's any teams that have that that they would be looking to get rid of. I mean, one example would be Jason Demers. I believe he carries a uh, partial no trade clause with about three years left on his contract, the 3.8 or $3.9 million. So, you know, that's some heavy cap hit going back, but Jason Demers is really solid. He can bring the offense, he can bring the defense, and uh, he could be a solid fit, but obviously his injury trouble is something that could um, uh, make Toronto rethink twice before 
you know, pulling something off like that. Obviously, Arizona would benefit benefit from getting a guy like Kadri. They will put themselves into a Galchenia Kadri uh, position where they're good one two down the middle. Uh, Galchenia, they're obviously hoping that he can still become what he was when he was drafted, and Kadri obviously is going to be that added piece. They have a lot of salary cap. Uh, this summer to work with so you know they're gonna be able to make that trade any day uh, but it's just a matter of how they do it and you know what they decide to do with it so let me know what you guys felt about this again down in the comment section we really love to hear what you guys have to say i know it's kind of a slow day for me in terms of uploading but i'm uh currently uh gonna be in the process of uploading the review between caroline and the new york owners after that game obviously finishes uh, and then I'm going to be doing the review for the Stars versus the Blues game. So watch out for those two other videos. And that's pretty much how that, and that's pretty much my video graphic for tonight. So thanks so much for watching again. My name is Nikita. This was the Hockey Nation. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe if you're new and pass it by. And if you're a hockey fan like me, my name is Nikita. This is the Hockey Nation. I'll catch you guys soon.